talent show. Something about what Nicholas says makes me realize I've been here before, on the other side of a bully's rage. I scream at the top of my lungs, venting my fury into the night. Tripping in a pothole, I land with a thud that knocks the wind out of me, and I'm suddenly struck by how funny this whole ridiculous situation is. Nicholas towers over me in his red suit, bewildered by my amusement. What's so funny all of a sudden? Oh, nothing. It's just I'm time traveling with Santa Claus. He shakes his head, unamused. You work so hard building that impenetrable wall around yourself. You don't think anyone would understand your experience, so you refuse to let anyone in. He considers his next words carefully. I'm here to save your life, and I have no illusions about how difficult that is. How do you save someone who's already lost their will to live? He searches me with his eyes. You're like a cornered animal, Paul, biting everyone who comes close to you. You were drowning long before you were ever in the water. My laughter fades like the end of an old song. You'd be angry, too. Winking at me, Nicholas says, Here's a little secret. I am angry. What pisses off Santa? I'm mad at you. You've been taking your life for granted and just letting it slip through your fingers. I've been busting my ass since day one, and it hasn't gotten me anywhere. We're both pissed off, and it's about time we start putting all that anger to good use. Nicholas reaches out to help me to my feet. Try to remember we're on the same side. Batting away his hand, I get up on my own steam. I fix my past, and I don't have to worry about any of this shit anymore. Looking at the hand I rejected, Nicholas says, That door closes, and this shit will be all you have to worry about. Then let's go get that key. I concentrate on curtains and counterweights. I imagine the heat of theatrical lights and the cacophony of an excited crowd. When I open my eyes, I'm standing backstage. It's May 2nd, 1997, about an hour before the talent show, and Mud is giving Jen an impromptu tour. The youngest squall sibling is in the 8th grade and has asked her older brother to give her a taste of what she can expect from high school in the fall. She smiles slyly at him, tucking her hair behind her ears. You know, we do our recitals here. I don't actually need you to show me around. Then why'd you ask me to? Chris approaches with Gail in tow. He grins broadly, his voice taking on a note of false coincidence. Oh, hey, Jen. I don't believe you've met Gail. Jen looks with mischief at the girl her brother has been spending so much time with. Hi, Gail. And how exactly do you know my brothers? Gail recognizes the ambush, but maintains her composure. Why school, of course. Of course. Gail's expression goes vacant, her eyes wide with innocent curiosity. And you? Savoring the challenge, Jen answers, We all lived in the same uterus, at different times, of course. I see. So, Gail, what are you doing for the talent show? Actually, Gail says, giving a look over her shoulder at Chris, I wanted to talk about that. Gail has an idea, says Chris. Mud raises his eyebrows in surprise. You guys have to win tonight, Gail says. You don't need any help, but I've been practicing your song. I've been working on backup harmonies, and I feel like the piano part I came up with is pretty good. You want to play on our song? Only if you want me to. Chris says, Gail was kind of nervous about what you'd say. She just showed it to me, and honestly, I think it would really add something to our performance. Jen says, that's why I asked you to show me the choir room. You were in on this too? Mud asks. Jen hums and waves her hand as if to say, kind of, and then she gets serious. One question before you let her sing my part. Everyone gives Jen their full attention. Gail, Jen says, crossing her arms and clasping her hands in a comical, romantic gesture. Precisely what are your intentions with my brother? 
Gail seems shocked by the brazen question and stands at a total loss for words. She begins to stammer. It's the first and only time I ever saw her like this. Chris lets his impatience show. Come on, there will be plenty of time for cat fights after we win. Jen cups her hand to her mouth, as if whispering a private aside to Mud. Well, regardless, I approve. Jen and Chris push their way into the choir room, but Mud stops Gail from following. What other secrets do you have up your sleeve? He asks playfully. Gail shrugs, a Mona Lisa smile painted across her face. As soon as the door shuts, I hear the audience's applause. Jen, who is waiting and singing from the wings, throws her arms around Gail as she leads Chris and Mud off stage. They're in rapture, congratulating each other and hugging. Mud takes Gail into his arms and kisses her without an ounce of his usual hesitancy. Chris pumps his fist. Nothing's stopping us from recording that demo now. Jen adds, Gail, you should totally be on it too. Usually I play the keyboards, but... Realizing she's just interrupted her big brother's makeout session, she makes a gagging gesture. Gross. Gail seems embarrassed by the public display. She takes a half step away from Mud, keeping her eyes fixed on his. There's no denying the naked look in her eyes. She's smitten. And yet, she pushes him away, saying, I'll only do it if Paul really wants me to. Of course I do. You made the song so much better. Chris pats Gail on the shoulder. Welcome to the band, he says. Aaron, the moon-faced baton twirler, waves Mud over. Paul, come here. He goes to her, saying, Aaron, you were really great, too. I was petrified. You were going to set yourself on fire. She turns her body so Mud must fully separate himself from the group to hear what she's saying. That's not why I'm calling you over here. Oh, what's up? Aaron stares at her baton, which she nervously makes teeter-totter. Do you really think you should be kissing Gail in front of everyone like that? He laughs, amused by Aaron's prudishness. I'm sorry, we're just excited about winning. She tilts her head up toward him, lines crinkling her forehead. What if her boyfriend saw? Or someone told him? Mud makes Aaron repeat herself three times before her words make any sense to his ears. 